I know you have been sort of uh, a skeptic in a sense that this is maybe central bank driven, that this is a market that is being propped up by sort of artificial forces. But you just look at the charts. Are the charts showing more gains ahead? Well, absolutely. It is a basically a bull market that requires central bank intervention. It cannot stand on its own. Uh, and so that's why we've seen so much multiple expansion in 2019 vis-a-vis -vis 2018, because we were basically at the same price levels we were last year, but things have gotten markedly worse. What we see in the charts, however, obviously we just broke out of a consolidation range that we're in in most of August. That has a measure target of up to 30.68 on, on the S&P. But there's obviously key resistance ahead, and we're building again uh, on overnight gaps and not with a lot of intraday price discovery. So I think there's still a jury out, but we have ECB this week and obviously the Fed next week, and I think those will be key decision factors for this market going forward. All right, and, and Jeff Kilberg, listen, I, I got to apologize, buddy, I guess. I mean, not for your bears, but, but for the fact I gave you grief a few weeks ago for loving the, the safe haven, the boring trade. OK, you've been right. That trade has done well. Are you shifting that money from that into something a little more risky or a little more aggressive? Well, I am, Sully, and we are going to book some profits in TLT as well as XLU, and you're right. As we see $17 trillion in negative yields, they have been buying treasuries here domestically, and they've also been searching yield and utility. So booking those profits, but looking into IHI, that's the medical device ETF. We're also looking at SOXX, that's the semiconductors. I think this week, Sven hit the nail on the head. This Thursday, when the ECB comes out, let's remember, Sully, when Mario Draghi, Super Mario Draghi, came back in 2012 and said, whatever it takes, I think here in 2019, at his last meeting on Thursday, he's going to say, here you go. So I think the markets are going to get a lot more stimulus, and we're going to move above that 3,000 level in the S&P 500 and catch a lot of shorts off sides. Yeah, you know, and it's, it is, uh, Sven, listen, it's a market where I hear from people on Twitter, and I love it, by the way, where people say this whole market for 10 years has been this sort of fake central bank-driven easy money liquidity market. I get that, but your job is to make money for yourself and for your clients. So as much as our viewers around the world may hate what is maybe behind this market, it's a market that, that just continues to move higher. You can hate it, but it's been profitable. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this, this, this game has worked. And I think for, for many of us, the question is simply efficacy. I mean, look, the ECB, as we just mentioned, they haven't been able to erase rates even to zero. They're still on negative and now going to go even further negative. So ultimately, you have to ask yourself, what is it actually producing? Because obviously, it's not produced growth in, in, in the long term. And what we're seeing in the United States now is a reduction in GDP growth. Uh, we saw it in, uh, in Q2, vis-a-vis -vis Q2 last year. We're seeing it in Q3 this year, going down to 1.5%, according to the Atlanta Fed, and down to 1.1% going into Q4, according to New York, the New York Fed now forecast. So there is market slowing growth. We're also seeing slowing growth in the earnings side that are coming in at negative 3.5% for, for Q3. So you're, you're dealing with multiple expansion. And so when, when you're re relying on central banks again to move the multiple equation or expansion forward, uh, you're running risks that markets get disappointed and, and you have sell-offs. So for now, clearly well, so the I'm momentum is there. Markets bit. demand these rate cuts. Go ahead, Jeff. Sure. I'm going to push back a little bit, Sven. I think the data here domestically is a little bit better than we actually expected in 2018. Yes, I get the recessionary worries over in Europe, but right now the data is pretty good. I travel all across the country talking to financial advisors, and every city I go to, it seems like they are booming. San Francisco, New York, Austin. We are seeing a lot of growth here domestically, so I think that's why we're attracting so many assets, and our stock market is doing so much better, Sven. Well, let me speak about the stock market, because actually what, what I've been tracking is the value line geometric index. It's absolutely true S&P and NDX are near all-time highs again, but the broader market has not been participating. In fact, there's been a market weakening from rally to rally to rally. The value line ge geometric index, is so for, for understanding, is not tracking based on market cap. It's tracking based on equal weight. And what we're seeing is the broader market's not participating. It, all the money is going still into the high cap tech stocks, mm -hmm. and so there's a massive divergence. So for, for a rally to be convincing, and remember, in the last year and a half, all new highs have been sold, right? They, they've not been able to sustain. So for a rally to convince, 
that dynamic in the market aspect structure has to change and we need to see the small caps, the banks, the transport, everything else moving above their resistance points when they haven't really gone anywhere in the last year and a half. I don't disagree, but if you've been short for the last 300 points of the S&P 500, how much more convincing do you need?